Hello friends, welcome to a new 3DS Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from CGK.com and today I decided to uh, postpone the plugin uh, tutorials, the two free and the paid plug plugin and script tutorials to the end of this series and uh, let's dive into our uh, final uh, project. Uh, now this uh, is a simple uh, modeling project as you can see but we are going to go through all the details. We are going to uh, create these lamps, uh, these uh, this arm armchair uh, and everything else and also i'm going to i want to show you how you can light the scene and maybe create some basic materials as well okay so this will be a fun one uh, it's not very in depth uh, but i guess this is a good ending to uh, this beginning series uh, we will have more advanced modeling tutorials modeling and rendering tutorials later on but for now let's uh, end this series with uh, this example Okay, first things first, let's create the floor and the walls, okay? Uh, for the floor, I'm going to create a plane. And let's, uh, sorry, I want to set my uh, units first because they are set to meters. The reason these, uh, this is set to meters is I usually use Unity with 3ds Max and Unity units are meters. So I usually work with meters uh, for that. But for modeling, I usually use centimeters, maybe always i guess and the uh, dimensions should be uh, 650 by 600 and let's hit w and move this to the origin okay and let's create the walls as well uh, let's create a box i'm going to create a box and then input some dimensions let's uh, input 600 for the width 20 for the length and 300 for the height and then I'm going to hit S and just grab this snap and move it here. Uh, after this, I want to hit S again to disable the snaps. I'm going to hold Shift and create a copy of this wall. Then hit E and I want to hit A for uh, enabling the angle snaps. Uh, because uh, we have go, uh, went through these before, so uh, I'm not going to just talk about everything in detail. If you have some problems, you can just slow down the video or just ask us in the comments. and. Uh, we will try to help you. I'm going to hit W again, hit S again, and then move this here. And maybe I can even put it like this because uh, I don't really like to end the corners with just a line um, in the middle because uh, sometimes some light goes through that in 3ds Max. It's a little weird, but it happens. So I just decided to uh, pull it on the back side of the wall. Now I'm going to add an edit poly on top, hit 4 to select the face uh, fa uh, faces and select this polygon in here and I can just move this uh, to this corner as well, okay? We could also do it with, from the box but uh, I decided to do it like this. Uh, I think it's uh, good for you to see different methods so uh, you should try this as well. I'm going to hold shift and create a copy of this wall. And then again, select this one, hold shift and create another copy here. And uh, for the ceiling, I'm going to create a box. Uh, I'm going to use the snaps again from this corner to co this corner. And I'm going to input 20 for the height. Uh, but if you do this, it's, it will be a little bit tedious to mo uh, continue modeling. So what I recommend you to do is, um, uh, I, or what I usually do is I right click, go to object properties and select display as box and if i hit ok then you will see that the box still stays there but it uh, it looks like a wireframe uh, of a box okay so you can just still select objects and move them around and uh, uh, this is a very useful trick in my opinion for interior scenes okay the second thing i want to do uh, let's uh, bring this back in uh, to remember uh, the second thing I want to do is to place a camera in the scene um, and then I'm going to just create some basic shapes for, uh, for placeholders for these. And let's start with a camera. I'm going to go to create uh, Corona. I'm going to use, uh, I, I usually use Corona render, so uh, I'm going to use this. Uh, sorry, create cameras, cor uh, standard Corona cam is in here. Or you can use uh, this toolbar as well. Here is a add Corona cam button. Uh, or this one, uh, I use this more, uh, even more. Uh, this creates a camera from your current 
point of view. We will talk about it in a minute. Now, first, let's uh, try to create it like this. Then I'm going to show you how to create it otherwise. Now, I'll just click and drag. And you can see that I placed my camera in here. Then what I want to do is I want to just... Uh, let's go to two viewport, uh, two viewport layout. And what you can do with this is you can see what you're doing from the perspective and you can check the camera view from here. And to be sure uh, that our camera is showing uh, the right things, I want to hit Shift S, which will help me uh, bring up the safe frame. Uh, this will be this will be the frame that will be shown. Uh, to me in the render so this uh, is a good way to not miss anything i guess and uh, then select the camera go to properties i disable the target because i don't want this to um, look down or look up i want this to be parallel to the ground so i'm going to pull this up in the z-axis and uh, actually uh, in here as well you can just input a person height for this like uh, 100 and 70 for example an uh, uh, eye height but i guess in this scene it's a little bit low the camera is a little bit lower i guess 1.5 meters is good let's uh, try that and if it doesn't work we can change that later uh, 150 meters now i know that we don't really see that much in here because we only see this wall i guess uh, but i can just bring my camera back a little bit no it doesn't work uh, if you want to see a wider scene uh, what you can do is you can just increase the field of view, which will, um, as you can see, which will increase the field of view of the camera. It increases the perspectiveness of the camera, uh, but uh, sometimes in the interior scenes, especially, sometimes you want to use this uh, property a little bit. Maybe 60 is not that distorted and uh, we can still see the whole wall. Maybe I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, but for now, let's just uh, keep this like that because I want to uh, get a sense of uh, perspective, sense of where the things are, I guess. And also, I can just bring my camera a little bit uh, more down, I guess, because I want to see the floor a little bit uh, more. And when I bring this back in, I also see, I guess, the camera is looking down a little bit, but whatever, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. For now, let's keep it like this okay now the second thing i want to do is to create a, a so uh, a basic shape uh, some basic shapes for the armchair the uh, coffee table like thing <laughs> and the back uh, object this one in here okay uh, to do those i'm going to create a box Let's uh, set the dimensions to 90 by 100, uh, sorry, 100 by 90. And let's set the height to 45. And then I'm going to pull this back a little bit. Maybe this is... And I'm going to um, create a copy of this box with snaps on top. And then I'm going to add an edit poly in here. Hit 4 and bring this back a little bit. Let's say that this represents the uh, the armchair or the so uh, sofa. Uh, sorry, the armchair, of course. And um, let's create another one of these boxes. And rotate it like this, and this will represent the coffee table. Uh, we do have some, a couple more objects like these, but these are not uh, like not that important for the general composition, I guess. So I'm going to just uh, continue with this. We will actually model these so uh, that we can do later. So let's create a another box. That's it, uh, T to go to the top view, hit F4 to see the edges, and then I will create this new box. Uh, let's uh, input 350 uh, to 
150 for the height and uh, for the width let's input 30 I guess yeah 30 is good uh, I'm going to hit T again uh, I'm going to hit Control A for to go to the align uh, command and I will align this new object to the wall to the back wall uh, what I want to do is I want to in the X axis I want the center point to meet the center point so I'm going to check those hit apply and in the Y position uh, Y axis I want the maximum point to meet the minimum point of the wall so this way it will just sit uh, on the middle and the on the front side of the wall and you don't need to use snaps or whatever I really really uh, like a line it saves me a lot of time okay let's say these are the basic uh, things now that I look into our reference image camera is definitely lower and uh, closer I guess and we should have a little bit more perspective distortion. Let's uh, try to find that angle. I'm going to go in a little bit. I'm going to go down. And this looks much more like the reference image, I guess. I, I will go back a little bit. And also, th th it's a very, very much better uh, <laughs> angle, I guess, uh, than the previous one. Okay. Because these, because these are the objects we want to present. Uh, these sh should look a little bit more like a, a hero objects, I guess. So making the camera lower or um, uh, lowering the camera to the height of these objects will will emphasize the uh, objects uh, to the viewer. All right. Now the last thing I want to do is uh, I want to create this baseboard. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use a command called sweep. Uh, I'll go to create line uh, shapes line and in here I'm going to hit S and just start from here and just create this line and you can see that we have the, this line in here now I'm going to use this line as a path for a sweep command or the sweep uh, modifier and I'm going to use a custom shape uh, to create that baseboard now what I want to do is I want to apply a sweep on top first. You can see that we already have a some kind of a model, but it is in the walls. I guess I can't really see it. The 3D uh, representation of the model, I can't really see it. So what I want to do first is I want to change the uh, pivot alignment, uh, which will help me uh, bring that yeah bring that model uh, on top of the line we have drew. Now, if you choose this, it will, uh, let's you, uh, think of this as a corner of this uh, shape. Uh, it will try to put the corner of this shape to the uh, path line we just created. So, as you can see, this is what we end up with. Now, uh, you can use these built-in uh, models uh, and create uh, beautiful shapes from them, but uh, I want to show you how to use a custom shape as well. So let's go to custom shape. Uh, we need to, of course, create one first. Uh, let's go to the left view, hit L. And then I want to create a custom shape in here. Uh, let's uh, start with a line. Uh, actually, I want to start with a rectangle. Create one. Then I'm going to input some dimensions. I really use to start shapes with the rectangles because I can input some dimensions. Uh, using line with dimensions is a little bit tricky. I don't really like that. So let's uh, set the height to 10 and set the width to 5. Uh, let's test this and see if it's good. And if it is, then I'm going to uh, create a more custom shape. Uh, let's. By the way, in uh, in scenes like this, in interior scenes, in exterior scenes, I want the real cool trick I want to use, I uh, like to use is uh, you can filter your selections, uh, which you can do it from here, by the way, selection filter. You can go here and choose shapes. And if you go ahead and click here now, it will only select shapes, not the wall, uh, not the geometry. So you can easily select these um, pieces separately, which is very cool in my opinion. Uh, but don't forget to go back because sometimes it happens, you just freak out what uh, you can understand what's happening it doesn't select everything uh, but if you be careful about not forgetting to close that down then it's it will be a breeze for you now i'm going to choose sweep 
go to the use custom section pick and pick this and you can see that uh, let's check this for my camera yeah the height looks very good i guess i want to use it like this uh, but what i uh, realized uh, from here is uh, i should just keep these going uh, on these edges because i can really see those in our render so what i want to do is i want to create a new line hit s again uh, start from here go here and do the same Now I want to uh, attach these new lines to the original shape we created. So let's select this, go to line, attach, and use uh, attach these two shapes. Then what I want to do, you know this from our uh, uh, editable spline lessons, uh, we need to uh, weld these corners of course. If I select them and hit weld, then they should work fine. Uh, now with sweep, uh, what I really don't like with this uh, modifier is it smooths the path somehow. And it's it always looks weird. Well, I don't know why it does that, but you can uncheck it from here. You can just uh, uncheck these two: smooth path and smooth section. Smooth section sometimes uh, works for you, but smooth path, I guess, rarely is useful. Uh, so I don't really like it and also the direction of the cha uh, shape changed so let's re yeah uh, realign this and uh, this worked for me for this example okay now I uh, <laughs> now that this is over I can just uh, customize my shape and see what's going on in the end result I want to add an edit spline on top uh, now what we can do is uh, we can in the modify tab modify tab uh, I can just use create line to create a new shape in this one and then delete the rectangle and then we, we will end up with the shape we desire now uh, the shape I want to go for is like this I'm holding shift while drawing this Okay, cool. Call spline. And then I can just get rid of the shell and uh, I will end up with this shape. Okay. Uh, let me check if we have any problems. I guess this is too little of a detail, so let's make these a little bit bigger. Yeah. Yes, this will work. Let's end isolate and see the end shape and result. Okay, now another problem with sweep, <laughs> we have a lot of problems with sweep as you can see. It's a very cool tool, but uh, it has all the, a lot of, the, of these little details you need to be careful about. Now as you can see, the uh, front side of the shape I drew is looking inwards. <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but you can mirror these easily because, uh, because 3ds makes uh, programs, programs I guess know about these uh, or figure out these uh, little uh, awkwardness since they put little checks and <laughs> everything will work uh, better and then I can just mirror this with this button and you can see that we have now our details looking inward okay so if I end isolate now I will end up with this uh, baseboard okay and also I want to apply because this is uh, done I can apply a chamfer and just uh, be done with it uh, let's input point two four or point three. No, point two is good. Uh, point two for amount, and let's input two for the segments. I guess this is good enough. Yeah. And before I finish this up, I want to select all the objects, and uh, I want to change these, the, change the color of these to black, and I want to hit M to go to the material editor right click anywhere go to materials corona or uh, let's let's use the standard uh, one uh, let's go to i guess the physical material is the new standard material 
Uh, okay, let's go to materials, general physical material. If you don't see this, you can just stand, choose standard material, I guess. It, it should be under scan line. Uh, but, like, okay, whatever, whatever default material you use, it doesn't really matter. I, I can even use Corona for this. But let's choose the physical material and just assign it to the objects. Uh, the purpose for this is I wanted to, the edges to look black because I, it's easy to see over gray. And I want the uh, objects to look, the shaded faces to look gray. So that way I, I'm not going to mess up the shapes the, uh, according to colors. So I want to just see the shapes. An interesting way, an alternative way to do this uh, could be the clay mold. But I really uh, modeled better in gray, in gray uh, rather than clay color. Uh, it's something I I am used to, I guess. I, I I don't know, but I prefer the gray color. So whatever whatever you prefer, the both uh, methods are uh, valid. Okay, this was a start to our interior scene. We are going to finish this uh, finish this whole thing up, and uh, we are going to create details over any objects uh, that are in here uh, but for now this is it thanks for listening i hope this was useful if you find it useful please hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button thanks for listening see you in the next lesson